Hi, I'm Lisa Bielefeld. I'm a second grade teacher at Wards Creek. The video you're about to see shows the use of the ERLA framework to assess a student's independent reading level. You'll also be able to see how the ERLA and eERLA align. eERLA is the online component to be able to store the data from the assessment as well as data that you'll be collecting on each student during the course of instruction, reading instruction. Wards Creek chose to use ERLA because the district essentially told all the elementary schools that they had to use some sort of a framework to monitor and assess students reading proficiency. So Wards Creek chose ERLA because of its alignment with the Common Core standards and also the Florida standards. So the video you're about to see is going to show me assessing three second grade students that I chose from my classroom. You'll also see how the ERLA framework in assessment aligns with using eERLA, the online component, to record all the data that you're going to get from the assessment and then data that you will get throughout the school year as you work for reading proficiency with each student. Okay, in the assessments that you're going to see, because these are second grade students that are being assessed, I'm going to start with the phonics leveling infrastructure that is in the beginning of the ERLA manual. For students that are in third, fourth, and fifth grade, you are going to be starting with the academic vocabulary leveling system. Again, this is also found at the beginning of the ERLA manual. We, um, when we start an assessment, we start on the phonics infrastructure leveling for leveling that's at the very beginning of your manual. You're going to ask the students to um, sit down and they're going to read across each row. And as you're reading, you're listening that they can um, pronounce all the words. In the box up here at the right hand corner are the actual instructions for you. Um, the student needs to be able to read 70 to 80 percent of the words in the column. There's 20 words in the column, so they have to be able to read 14 to 16 of those words correct in order to have be put into that level. So the way that I do it is when, as I start having students reading across, as they start to miss words in the column, I keep track of the words that they're missing. Once they get Typically, for my kids, the, they start missing in the last column because this is the hardest column to decode. As they start missing words in the column, I keep track. Once they've missed more than six words in a column, I no longer have them read that column because basically they've made enough error to where that column of words, those, are, those words are too difficult for them to read independently. So then I would just ask them to continue to read, not reading at each column. And if they continue to miss, if they, once, if they miss six in this column, I would drop off this column and I would keep going. This helps me to find where I'm going to start them on the cold read, kind of narrows down the different levels so I don't have, there's not so much of guesswork involved. So once they finish on this phonics leveling page, then I see what the column that they could had um, at least 70 to 80 percent of the words read. Then I use that level to determine. I go to that level in the manual and have them start read on the cold read. All right, so Natalie, what I want you to do is right now I'm going to have you read some words to me. We're going to try to determine what your just right books are. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is read a word list to me, and then that will help me know where to start you off with some reading. All right, so what I want you to do is you're going to start at this word and you're going to read across, and as you go you can pull the paper down. I'm going to keep track of if you have any misses, you just need to keep reading until I ask you to stop. All right, you understand? Okay. okay ready? Go. Anne, Pam, Hammer, Henry, Samuel, Anne, Man, Candle, Candlelight, Piano, Anne, Sand, Sandy, Understand. Do the best you can. Hand claps. Okay. At, bat, battle, scratchy, attention. Mm -hmm. Down, 
brown. Halloween. This. Dard. Okay. Touchdown. Get. Mat. Water. Stretch. Mix. Get in. Okay. In. Skin. Kevin. And I. Skinner. It's pit quarter. Slutting. So station. Okay. Up pu puppies upset. What's that? Upsetting. Okay. Cheaper wear. As X. What's it? I know I just can't pronounce okay, it. Okay, right. go ahead and say it the way you want to say Ass, it. Ass. Yes, that's it. Basket, basketball, basketball, Alaska, or four, four, forgotten, original. Good. Saw, draw, drawing, strawberry, Mr. Aubrey, Burton, Will, Bill, Chili, Hillary, William, all tall, tallest. Doctor William Williamson. All together, King Lean Lamy, Shameful Mrs. Answerly. Can you skip one more? Go back to this one. Big Wig Ignore Ignore uh -huh. Fingers. Okay. Keep going. King Lean Lamy. Blaming, shameful. You don't need to read that column anymore. Keep going down. Day, clay, player. Is that better? Playful. What's that word? Playfully. Okay. Make, 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 Okay, perfect. Nice job. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to a reading passage that I would like you to do. What are we going to have you do? Now, Natalie, is you're going to read part of a story to me. You can either read these three pages out of the story Soccer Sam. You can read these four pages out of the book Little Witches Big Night. You can read about adult snakes out of this book's Life Cycle of Snakes, or you can read these pages out of Bones. Which one looks good to you? You want to do Little Witch's Big Night? All right, so what I need for you to do is, this is just part of the story, so you're going to read these four pages for me, do the best you can with reading, and I want you to think about your thinking and pay attention to what you're reading, because when you're done, I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? All right, so, hit it. Halloween night. All the witches were busy. They were busy getting ready for their Halloween ride. Grouchy witch was busy making grouchy faces in the cracked mirror. Nasty witch was busy shooting a water gun at her cat, Bow Wow. Mother witch was busy making a new broomstick for a little witch. Oh, what a wonderful Halloween it's going to be. All the witches are ready, but where was little witch? Little witch, what are you doing, called mother witch? Mother Witch was went upstairs and into Little Witch's room. What? You made your bed again? Screeched Mother Witch. Sorry, Mother, I forgot, says Little Witch. Very good reading. All right, so I'm going to take this away and I have a couple questions for you. All right, so can you tell me what's happening in the story so far? The witches are getting ready for Halloween night. Very good. That, that's exactly what's happening. How many witches are there? Four. Four witches. Good job. Why is Little Witch in trouble for making her bed? Because she wasn't supposed to make it. 
What in the story makes you think that? Because my mother would say, why did you make your bed? She said, why did you make your bed, right? And what did Little Witch say to that? Sorry, Mother. Sorry, Mother. Good job. All right, that was really good reading. Would you be interested? I'd be interested in reading the rest of the story, wouldn't you? All right, so for Natalie's cold read, she made only two errors. She had self-correction. So I would say, yes, she was reading with 98 to 100% accuracy. She stopped and tried again if something didn't make sense. And she read fluently and with the expression that I would expect. So I'm going to give her, I'm going to say yes for all three of those top quiet comprehension questions of applying foundational skills. And then she answered the questions for basic understanding what was happening in the story and on the four point scale, one, two, three, and four. I'm going to give her a four for basic understanding and then also a four for inferences. Natalie was able to go back and talk about in, what was happening in the story and also why Little Witch got in trouble for making her bed and she actually quoted out of the story. So the next part we're going to do, Natalie, is I've got a couple of word lists I need for you to read to me. So on the word list portion now, I'm going to actually go to E. Erla and I'm going to be checking off the words on the computer as you are saying them to me. Now, i got to tell you, Natalie, the way this computer screen is built, it kind of looks funny. My screen isn't nearly as big as your book, so I might have to ask you to slow down a little bit because I'm going to be checking off words as you're reading. Okay. So I'm going to have you start reading here on this first column and again I want you just to read the best that you can I just want you to read the words you're going to read down each column when you get to one column you're going to come over to the other side and you're going to just keep reading down the column want you, we're going to try to have you read all of these words all right you understand what you need to do mm -hmm. all right go ahead hang on one second whoa, whoa, whoa. hang on let me get my computer ready okay go String, splash, screen, sprout, squirt, through, shriek, earth, burst, scratch. Okay, Dream. hang on one second. Hang on one second. Let me get my thing over. Okay, go. Stringy, splashes, screen, shouting, squirrel, squirrel, bottle, itchy, itchier, itchiest, thumper, haunted, tour, ground, Okay, wait one second. Wait one second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going way faster than I can move my cursor. All right, let me get it set over here. All right, we're right there. Got haunted, toward, ground, smooth, hooked, noy, spilled, spoiled, obey, wait, chewier, paper, baking, female, even, nicest, shiny, tony, hopping, loopy, tuba. Okay, Bad. hang on one second. I need to catch up with you, babe. Alrighty. Now we're at the top of this column, right? Battery, relaxing, afternoon, powerful, invited, favorite, entertain, crocodile, argument, Washington. Thank you for waiting for me. Okay, last column. Remember, divided, contained, bodily, Properly understand it, suggested, decide, example. Expected, Good hibernation. Job. Awesome. All right. Okay, so that was the whole entire phonics survey for the 1R entry requirements and Natalie in order to enter 1R she needed to get 20 words correct and she got way more than 20 words. She actually got, uh, let's see here, she actually named 51 out of 61 words correct. So I'm going to now move over to the tricky word section. Those are the sight words. All right Natalie. You're going to read these words for me. These are sight words in 1R. Um, again, you're, Natalie, you're going to read down the columns, all right? And as Natalie is reading, I'm going to be counting what she has gotten correct, checking it off in E. Erla. 
Again, the entry level for this is 30 words correct out of the 60 on the page. So Natalie, thank you for waiting for me. You see me fumbling here, wait up for me. So you're gonna start right here. And with a lot of these words you should already know. These are your sight words. All right, when you're ready. Bean, believe, bicycle, board, bottom, rot, bread, breakfast, building, city, climb, clothes, clothing, country, dollar, dumb, early, engine, feather, field, floor, frightened, front, glove, Heavy idea. Okay, hang on one second. I'm Tanamit. Glove. Heavy idea. What was the word after idea? Indian. Thank you. Key. Kind. New. Not. Library. Life. Machine. Magic. Ute. Moon. Move. O'clock. Peace. Pond. Poor. Present. Princess. Question, roof, second, secret, shall, shovel, sign, sorry, stood, straight, warm. Let me ask you, what was this word again? Sign. Good, I just didn't hear you. Okay, let me move my cursor down. Okay, go ahead. Let's Wait. see. I am Wait. Matt. Okay, way. Wait, whisper, whistle, wife, wild, wind, wolf. Nice job. All right, Natalie had answered actually 61 out of the 63 words correct on this page. So she has almost all of these tricky words. So based upon um, Natalie's comprehension read and what she did on the phonics list and the tricky word list, Natalie it does qualify to enter the 1R reading level. Natalie started in 1R because when we did the phonics list at the very beginning, um, she missed enough words in the last category to qualify to move her back into 1R. Abigail, what we're going to do today, we did this at the very beginning of the year, but we're going to do it again. We're going to start off first. You are going to read me this list of words. You're going to read across each row. You're going to start here and just read the words across the best you can. I'm going to cover the words up, then as you get through with one row, go ahead and move the paper down and just keep reading across. So there might come a point where I say, oh, you don't have to read the last column anymore. And then you'll just keep reading until we get to the very end of the page. All right, got any questions? You good? Okay, can you manage to move the paper too? Can you move the paper down as you get to the next row? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, go ahead. You're going to start right there. Am, ham, hammer, hammer, Samuel. Mm -hmm. Ann, pan, candle, candlelight, piano. And Okay, so Abigail is like right on the borderline of missing in two on the two R column. She had six mispronunciations, and that's right at the number 14. So I'm going to go ahead and try. Try. I'm going to have you try to read a reading comprehension piece that's in two R, and we'll see where she ends up on that. If how how she does on that reading piece. We now are going to read for me. Um, you have choice. We have four choices, okay? You're going to read part of a book. You can either read chapter one out of Alone in His Teacher's House, Marvin Redpost. Love Marvin Redpost. Or you could read chapter two from Julian, Dream Doctor. Those are both fiction. You can read these four pages from Monster Bugs, nonfiction. Or you can read these, this section from the story The Titanic about the ship, the Titanic, that hit an iceberg and sank many years ago. So what looks interesting to you? What would you like to read to me? This one, Teacher's Pat? Okay, so Abigail, you're going to start here at Teacher's Pat. You're just going to read all the way through. Okay? I want you to think about what you're reading. When you're finished, I'm going to ask you 
to answer some questions for me. Okay, about what you've read. All right, so whenever you're ready, go ahead and start there. You will have a substitute teacher tomorrow. All right, very good reading. All right, so Abigail just read that cold read in 2R, going up and looking at the running records sheet, looking at the active strategies. She read with 98 to 100 percent accuracy. She had two misreads on the name Stuart and another word, but those were not words that would have altered the meaning of the text. And she did make another omission, but she did go back and self-correct. So she did stop and try again if something didn't look or sound right, and she did self-correct. She did read fluency, and she did read with expression a couple times. One time she read through the period, but she stopped, went back, and started reading again. So I would, get, I would answer yes to all of those active reading strategies on the cold read running record. All right, now I need to ask you a couple questions about what you read. What's happening so far in the story, Abigail? Um, and can you tell me more? And his teacher's not going to be next, there until next Thursday. Okay, and? Nick is worried, and he doesn't want his solitude. All right. Can you tell me a little more? Um, he, he and his, he and his friends want to be each other. Okay. They both want to be on um, Nick, but he doesn't want them, want either one of them to be him. Very good. Okay. So, Abigail explained that pretty well. I prompted her a little bit, and I, and I think that that's acceptable with just like, tell me more. But what I was really looking for, I wanted to make sure you told me about the whole part about how the boys wanted to change to be each other, right? And she had a, a little bit of a mistake. It was both the boys that wanted to be Marvin, but Nick was worried about having the substitute teacher. So even though she did miss a few of the tiny details, I would give her either a, a three or a four on that um, reading comprehension, basic understanding of what was happening in the text. So now my next question I have for you, Abigail, is why wouldn't Marvin, why wouldn't Marvin want his friends to pretend to be him? And use evidence from the text to support your answer. How come Marvin doesn't want his friends to pretend to be because him? Because he doesn't want Stuart, 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 or Nick to be on him, and he doesn't even want to do it. Okay. So what in the story makes you think that? Why doesn't he want Nick or Stuart to be him? Because at the like at the end of the story, it says it. What does it say? that um, he doesn't want either of them to be in. Okay. I want you to look back, and I want you to look for a few more details to tell me why Marvin doesn't want his, doesn't want his friends to pretend to be him. Because he was worried about the sensitive teacher coming. Okay, and um, that's what tells you that in the text, that he's worried about the substitute teacher coming for the week? Okay, all right, good. Okay, so I would give Abigail a three on making inferences. She had to look back. I was looking for the idea that the substitute teacher was coming in and Marvin was worried they were going to be getting into trouble. So I would give her a three for that making inferences. She did go back to the text. She did cite evidence about what, that Marvin was worried about the substitute teacher. So a three or a four on the basic understanding and a three or a four on the inferences, um, that would give her a total of six or seven points. So that is enough points on the reading comprehension part to go ahead and continue with a further assessment in 2R. Um, a student has to have in the 2R category at least score at least six points in the comprehension portion to be able to move on to the next parts. Okay, so Abigail, what you're going to do now is I have some words, a word list I want you to read. 
hang on one second. So when I'm going to eat Erla, I have Abigail, I have my class list actually pulled up. So I'm going to click on 2R because that's the level we're working in. And then I'm going to click on Entry Requirements. And now I can pull up the Tricky Phonics word list that she is going to be reading out of the manual. And I will try to keep up with her and mark all the answers, all the words that she reads correctly in e Erla as she goes. All right, so I want you to start here and I want you to go down the column. So read this group of words, this group of words, all the way through, okay? And if I ask you to stop or slow down, it's just because I'm trying to catch up to your awesome reading on the computer screen. All right, you ready? Okay, hang on, let me move down just a little bit. Okay, you're going to start right there, babe. Go. Okay, so Abigail, the entry requirements on this entry level is 20 words, and she read 44 words out of 70. So she, um, she can enter 2R on the um, tricky word phonics list. So in 2R... Abigail, you're done. So for Abigail, on 2R, the entry requirements are being able to decode the tricky phonics list. And she did read enough words. It's a 20-word entry level. And she read enough words to enter that. So I'm going to click on yes on E. Erla that she entered that. For reading comprehension, she did score enough points to um, move into 2R. So looking at E. Erla, at the scroll down to the very bottom and it says ready for 2R. I have to click on yes, ready for 2R. So then on E. Erla, I'll be able to look at the comprehension skills, the foundational skills, and the transi transition skills as I'm looking to form my instruction. And then in this section is where I'll start adding points for Abigail, looking at the different comprehension elements by standard and also the foundational skills by standard. So in this section of e Erla is where the students start to amass those points, things that you see during your instructional time. It can either be a small group, it can be during whole group, it can be on assessments that you do weekly, however you look to find these elements to be able to see, yes, a student is able to do these different comprehensional elements by standard or the different foundational skills by standard, this is where you would go to start giving them points to earn, to garner enough points to then move to the next reading level whatever that would be. In Abigail's case, 2R is at the end of the last six months of second grade. So she would then transition into the white level, which is the third grade level. The whole entire year for third grade is the white level. You're going to start reading across the rows. All right. And as you finish, you can just pull the paper down and you're just going to keep Reading. Got it? All right. Whenever you're ready. Am, ham, hammer, hammering, Samuel. Am, man, candle, candlelight, piano. Lauren only had one misread in the 2R column, so I'm going to go ahead and move her up to white and see how she does in the on a third grade level. Now, this is a little bit of a different a little bit of a different test or a little bit of a different um, assessment. Okay, so Lauren, what you're going to do, this is now, we're looking at academic vocabulary and I'm going to have you look at all the words that are in this column right here. What I would like you to do is you can pick three words and you're going to tell me either a short definition or a synonym, a word that means about the same as that word. Okay, you're going to pick three, then I'm going to pick three. All right? And you can pick any word you want in the column. So, do you see any in there that you want to tell me about? 
shallow. Shallow. So what's a synonym for shallow or a short definition? Um, shallow is like in a pool. It's not deep. It's like... Good. Not deep, right? The shallow part of a pool? Okay, so that's one. Pray. Okay. <coughs> what do, what's a synonym for pray? P-R-E-Y. Victim. Okay. And pick another one. Erupt. Erupt. What's a synonym for erupt? Explode. Good. That's right. Okay, my turn. I'm going to pick three. Ready? Capture. Capture means to, like, get what you want, like, capture it. Like. Can you think of a word I could use instead of capture? Instead of if I said I captured a fly, what's another word I could use in there instead? I, I catched a fly. I caught a fly. Good. Okay, so if you capture something, you catch it, right? All right, so we did capture, we did erupt. Oh, how about exclaim? Can you tell me what exclaim means? Should I pick another word? Okay. How about uh, glimmer? Glimmer means like serving using glimmer you can be seen. And um, it means like it's bright and glittery. Okay. All right. So. Entry into white, sometimes white readers that are getting ready to enter into white might not know all these words, so there's an alternative assessment that we can go back, that I can look at, and I'm going to do that with Lauren. So I'm going to go to the white section, and there's actually, it's called the academic... Uh, it's called the vocabulary check and what it does is it puts different academic words actually within a context of a sentence so the student can use the sentence clues, the word clues, to help figure out what a different word means. So in order to enter into this level, Lauren will need to get four of these words correct. So Lauren, um, would you read that sentence for me? She was extremely proud of her little dog. Okay, the word extremely is underlined. So could you tell me uh, a synonym for extremely? Another word I could put in there that would mean about the same thing as extremely? Very, very. Very, very proud. Good job. Very works. All right, can you read this one? Susie was mad and muttered to herself all the way home. All right, and that word muttered is underlined. What's another word I could put in there for mutter that would mean about the same thing? Mumbled. Mumbled to herself all the way home. Exactly. Good job. All right, what about that one? Grandpa's in a bad mood tonight, remarked Mom. All right, so that word remarked is underlined. Can you tell me a different word I could put in there for remarked? Said. Yep, perfect. Next. The class was overjoyed about the field trip. Yes. So you see the word overjoyed is marked under. So what is another word I could put in there for overjoyed? Very glad about the field trip. Very glad, very... Happy. Very happy, yes. Next. They drove off into the setting sun. Mm -hmm. And setting is underlined. What's a word or a phrase I could put in there instead of setting? Um, going down. Yes, the sun was going down. Good job. Next. Ronald 
dreaded having to tell his father the bad news. Yep, so dreaded. What's another word I could put in there? You could put in substitute for dreaded that would mean about the same thing. He didn't want to. He didn't want to. He, Ronald didn't want to have to tell his fam father the bad news. Correct. The bully, oops, sorry, you need to read. Go ahead. The bully snatched the candy out of the little boy's hand. And what's a different word we could put in there for snatched? Grabbed would be fast. Yes, good. Next. Tamaka was so excited she was bouncing off the walls. About that phrase, bouncing off the walls is underlined. What are some other, what's another phrase we could put in there that would mean she was bouncing off the walls? What does that mean? She was like so excited she was. Jumping all around. It's perfect. Next. This new ice cream will work. This new what? This new cream <laughs> will work wonders on those dry <laughs> Not ice cream, right? <laughs> Okay, so works wonders. This new cream will work wonders on those dry hands. Work wonders is underlined. What's another phrase we might use for that? Tastes really good? Mm, not quite. But that's okay. Let's go on to the next one. Something works wonders. We'll think we'll think about that one and come back to it, okay? Last one. After seeing the ghost, June was a little shaken up. That's actually Juan. Okay, go ahead. Juan was a little shaken up. So shaken up is underlined. So what's another word or phrase we could put in there for shaken up? Scared. Scared, yes. Upset. Good job. All right, so Lauren actually, out of those 10 passages, she got nine correct. So that, according to the vocabulary check, she can enter into white. But before I'll actually put her into white, I'm gonna, she's going to need to read a, a reading passage on the comprehension to make sure that this is, her, this is the correct independent reading level for her. All right, so Lauren, the last thing I need to have you do for me, I think... Check to make sure. I'm looking on E. Earl. The last thing I need to have you do is I'm going to have you read part of a story for me. You, you have some choices, so you can decide what looks more interesting to you. You could read one little section out of the book Claudia Christina Cortez Beach Blues. You could read a section out of the book Aliens for Breakfast. And then we have two informational texts. You can read chapter one out of the book Hungry Plants called Gotcha. Or you can read one chapter out of the book Tut's Mummy informational text. So which one of these would you be interested in reading out loud to me? Okay, there we go. So you're going to read out of Claudia Christina Cortez Beach Blues. Okay, so as you're reading this, I'm going to listen to you read. All right. I want you to be thinking about what you're reading because when we're finished, I'm going to, I've got three questions I'm going to ask you based upon what you've read and inferencing and what you understand about the story, okay? All right, so whenever you're ready, go ahead and start up here. Chapter 1, Tuesday Surprise. My father is dependable and boring. He wears a suit and goes to work before I get up six days a week. He comes home at 6.15 every night. I miss her, I said sadly. You'll have plenty of time with her, Dad said. It's a long drive to Florida. Wow, really good reading. Good job. And what you guys can't see, but on the text there's bolded things, and that's when Lauren was really um, using here. You could tell, you could hear the different changes, the way she changed her tone, and how she emphasized the words. So great reading, Lauren. All right, three questions for you. Ready? So looking back at the cold read requirements. So. 
Um, I would have to say I would answer again for the given unfamiliar text on the cold read with no help of any kind. Lauren read that passage with 99 to 100% accuracy. She did have really good rate and expression. He did a really nice job reading. And she did stop a couple times if something didn't look good, look right to her, the name Claudia. She stopped, she went back, she read, reread, and you did that a couple times. So you monitored your understanding, which is really good. So I would give her, um, I would say yes in all three of those categories to be able to fluently decode um, the, a white, unfamiliar text. For the white level, you notice I actually asked three questions. So students entering the white level have to have a minimum of nine points on the um, comprehension questions. For basic understanding, I would say that Lauren was between a three and a four. I was looking for some details about her father always does the same thing every day and that Claudia was a little bit surprised when she saw her dad on Tuesday. But she did a really nice job remembering the end of the story. So when she did look back, I gave her an opportunity to look back and she could, she did recount those details from the beginning of the story. On the making inferences part, again, she did realize that the mom and dad was trying to tell her something about grandma, but she had to look back at the story to realize that she was telling them that grandma was going to be taking a trip to Florida and that she wasn't sick or anything like that. And then using comprehension to infer a reasonable meaning of the word, she looked, she had to, again, she had to go back and look to see what the word dependable meant, but she was able to see that dependable meant did the same thing all, every day, all the day, all the time. So um, even though she did need to go back and look at the text, and the comprehension might not be a really strong nine. I feel like the way that she read it and the comprehension that she did read, I would go ahead and place Lauren in the white, the white reading level right um, now based upon the, um, the evidence that I've seen for the entry requirements. So for the white entry requirements, she had the um, we already did the vocabulary check. That was when Lauren went back and read the sentences and gave me answers um, or gave me synonyms for all of the other, um, for the words that were underlined. And she got, um, I believe, nine out of ten of those correct. So I'm going to check those in on E. Erla right now that she got these words got these synonyms correct. The one other thing that Lauren needs to read for me as a white entry level is the phonics gap locator. Again, this is a word list. She's going to be reading out of the manual. I'm going to be clicking in on E. Erla as she is reading these various uh, words with different um, phonics skills. And the entry level for this is she needs to read 30 of these words correctly and the exit level is 70, which is all the words on the page. So Lauren, you are going to start here and you're going to read the different columns. So if you'll start here, read these words and then read these words and you can see they're grouped. All right, so as you are reading, I am going to be checking off on the computer. I may have to ask you to slow down a little bit as I move the cursor around. All right, you ready? Okay, so you're going to start right there. Interrupted. Responsibility. Refrigerator. All right. All right, so on our phonics locator, Lauren, actually, you got, let me move this over here. 56 out of 70 words correct. So she had to get 30 correct to enter in the white level. So I feel like the white reading level is the right level for Lauren. Did that feel pretty comfortable reading that reading passage for you? You didn't get all these words, but a lot of them looked familiar to you, didn't they? Good job. All right, so on E. Erla, I've clicked in the phonics locator. I've actually gone ahead and clicked in. Um, I've answered yes to the vocabulary because she did the vocabulary check and she got nine, um, only missed one of those words. 
um, the phonics gap locator. She did 56 out of 70 words, so I've clicked in yes for that. She got enough points in the comprehension on a cold read test to be able to answer yes to that. Um, I know Lauren, and I can answer. She can answer a. She can read a chapter book within a week's time, and she also understands how to read informational text. So at the very bottom of the entry requirements for the white level, I scroll all the way down. I'm clicking on ready to enter white. So Lauren is now in as being a white level reader. I hope you found the, this video useful in understanding how to use ERLA and E-ERLA to determine a student's independent reading level. I think you'll find that as you use the tool and you become more familiar with it, it actually becomes a little more user friendly. As you are using Erla in your classroom, if you come up with any tips or shortcuts or anything that would make it easier for all of us to use, please don't hesitate to share that with me. Also, when you start assessing students in your classroom, I'd be happy to try to answer any of your questions or if you'd like me to come into your classroom and actually help you with an assessment or demonstrate an assessment, I'd be glad to do so. Thanks a lot.